Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to explore the electric field around a proton, especially a proton inside a hydrogen atom. Because about 53 picometers away, which is 0.53 angstroms away, there's a small electron that zips around the nucleus of that atom, which is, of course, the proton. So we're going to explore this in terms of the electric field, and we're going to use Gauss's law to figure that out. First of all, we're going to also explore the equation again that Gauss came up with, which is basically the integral, the surface integral of the electric field multiplied times a small area element on the Gaussian sphere. And then we integrate that all the way around the sphere, and he claimed that was equal to the charge inside divided by epsilon sub naught, which is the permittivity of free space. Since this is a dot product, we can rewrite this as the magnitude of the electric field times the small little area element on the surface of the Gaussian surface times the cosine of the angle between the perpendicular to the surface and the electric field. But since the electric field will emanate through that Gaussian surface perpendicular to the surface, we can go ahead and say that the cosine of the angle is 1 because the angle theta is equal to 0. The angle between them is 0. So that eliminates the cosine, and so we have the integral of E dot dA. And then we realize since the magnitude of the electric field is constant all the way around the surface, then we can simply take that outside the integral sign, and it's simply an integral of the small little area element over the Gaussian surface, which basically gives us the area of the Gaussian surface. So we end up with the equation that we're now familiar with, E times A is equal to the charge inside the surface divided by epsilon sub naught. And so that's the equation we've been using. Now, this, the little sub g here simply indicates that's the area of the Gaussian surface. And so this complicated looking equation simply boils down to something that's quite simple. As long as we make sure that the electric field emanates through the Gaussian surface perpendicular to the surface, and that the electric field is constant anywhere along the surface. So now that we again have, a, have kind of our, our head on that, let's now go ahead and calculate the electric field at a distance of 53 picometers away from the proton because that's where the electron resides in the hydrogen atom. So that means we have A is equal to the charge inside divided by the area of the Gaussian surface, which is going to be 4 pi A sub naught squared. Now, the reason why I write A sub naught instead of R, because by definition, that is what we call the Bohr radius. So this is known as the Bohr radius, which was the determination of how far away the electron was from the proton in a hydrogen atom. And so this is 4 pi r squared, but we'll use a sub naught squared, times epsilon sub naught. Plugging everything in that we know, so we have the electric field is equal to the charge inside, of course in this case, the charge inside the Gaussian surface is going to be the proton, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs divide by 4 pi and divide by the distance to the electron, 53 picometers, which is 53 times 10 to the minus 12 meters, and we square that, and then epsilon sub naught is of course 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, that would be coulomb squared per newton meter squared. Good thing we don't have to use slide rules anymore. All right, 1.6 e to the 19 minus divided by 4 divided by pi divided by 53 e to the 12 minus squared and divided by 8.85 e to the minus 12, okay, equals. And we have quite a strong electric field. The electric field is equal to 5.1 times 10 to the minus 11. Oh no, not minus 11. That would make it a very weak field. It's to the 11 newtons per coulomb. So that is an actually an incredibly powerful electric field. So at the distance of where the electron resides, we have an absolutely enormous electric field. So therefore we have this enormous attraction between an electron and a proton which forces the electron to move around the proton at very high speeds. At least, now we have this concept of how strong the electric field is inside a tiny little atom, which keeps the proton and the electron in very close proximity. 
So in the next video, we're going to explore this a little bit more, and we're going to figure out how fast the electron has to move in order to stay in orbit around the proton, where we have this enormous electric field at that distance. And that's how it works.